Artisans Editor at Variety, and I'm thrilled to be here today. I'm your host for today's Half Hour with Them. With us, we have creator, showrunner, EP, and writer Little Marvin, and we have actors Ashley Thomas and Deborah Ayarinde. Hello and welcome. Hi. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to dive into the series. But before we do so, let's look at the trailer from them. Pretty nice, huh? Bigger than it looked in the pictures. When I think of home, I think of a place where there's love overflowing. You couldn't imagine a nicer place to live. I wish I was home. I wish I was back there with the things I've been knowing. This home is ours. This is how it begins with one family. They came from someplace worse. We'll have to make this place worse. What's worse than worse? Heard them folks in Compton straight up evil, man. Fuck this. There's something bad in this house. I don't like it. We got our eyes on you. <laughs> Till it gets done. I haven't watched that. No, these guys know I get yeah, it. Yeah, I actually. I'm about to start crying just uh, watching. I have two. Is that <laughs> oh. um, Fields, congratulations on this incredible series. Wow. I mean, little Marvin, let's go back to the idea behind how this all began because so much of this actually does honor the Great Migration and like Black families as they attempt to integrate into society. So tell us where it began for you. I mean, that was really the, the beginning of the journey was that um, that want to honor. Um, as dark as the show is, as, as terrifying as the show can be, um, it was really a love letter. Like we set out to make a love letter to the families of the Great Migration, and particularly to families who had moved into what had formerly been exclusively white neighborhoods and were um, subjected to much of the same terror um that the emery's experience in the show so first and foremost um it was a love letter and it was also a way to sort of unpack i i want we wanted to explore the american dream you know who gets their keys to it and who doesn't in this country and there's nothing more sort of emblematic of that than the dream of home ownership um so exploring home ownership but through the black lens was really the beginning i love that and deborah and ashley i'm just so curious, and I think our audience would be too, just to hear about what was the pitch for this series? Like, what was the first thing you heard? They heard, yeah. please, they heard, please. That's what they heard, please, please do it. <laughs> to be honest with okay. you, yeah, I mean, um, so I wasn't really pitched, I was just sent the material, right? I was sent, I think, um, the first two or three episodes and I, I, I read through and to be honest with you, I, I don't think I had to be pitched. I just, you know, I saw it and it was written with so much honesty and so much, um, so much intention that really it was a no brainer. I was in my head, like if they'll have me when we met, the conversation just flowed. I, you know, there was no question that was off limits. We spoke about our experiences being them um, just our journeys to the point, you know, that we were meeting and it was just really beautiful. So not only did I want to work on this, on this beautiful piece of art, but I also wanted to work with this person that I just met that I felt like I had known for ages. 
So yeah, that was my pitch. If you know, it wasn't really a pitch, but yeah. Am I allowed to say that right back? Because it was, I mean, it's like, it's that and more. I remember that first meeting. Uh, it was, it was, it, we were also with Miri Yoon, our, our fantastic executive producer. And, you know, Deborah left the room and Miri and I just stood there aghast, I like, just with our mouths like agape, because it was so clear that like, you know, Lucky occupies nearly every frame, Lucky and, and Henry, they occupy so much of this and they, it goes to such a, you know, there's so much scope. And you got the sense instantly sitting with Deb um, in that moment that she was going to embody that um, with every you know cell of her being. So oh, yeah, I was immediately passionate about Lucky, like immediately. And that's what we really spoke about on that meeting, just like our love for the story, our love for you know what we do. And so it was just beautiful. Yeah, and me. I, what about you? I got sent the sides, just like every actor. You just get sent the sides and it's like your agent's like, look, there's this great project. Um, take a look at the sides. If you want to do it, put yourself on tape. So I kind of just read sides, put myself on tape, but I immediately got the writing from the scenes. And I felt that, you know, it, it just sat with me well. I could really understand what was going on. And then when I heard that uh, there was some interest, I got sent three of the, the first three scripts. And then when I read it, I was like, ah, oh, like, what have I got myself in for? So I was immediately like overcome by fear and self-doubt, right? Because you have this amazing piece of writing and this weighted project that's about um, American history and is going to be such an important story. So with that, I was just, I was, yeah, I had a lot of self-doubt. Just could I even deliver the part? Could I go through the gears that I need to? Do I have all the layers that Henry has as a character and it's beautifully written. So I was just, for me, it was the role of a lifetime. Um, it was a dream role. And I was just, you know, I was praying to the universe that I would, that I would get it. Cause I knew doing the part, I would have to fully um, challenge myself um, and transform fully into Henry. And a lot of work was gonna have to be put into, to play the character authentically, how I thought that it should be played. And, what would do Little Marvel's words justice? It's always a trip for me to hear that he was scared or that and I have to, cause I saw he was, his was the one audition, Ashley's that I actually got to sit in and he'll remember. I was like sobbing at his audition. There was never a question. So when these two, when I hear that they were both scared, it's, it's really, it's, it's a shock to me because they were so, you know, so ferocious in terms of their commitment. Um, and so embodied the roles from like minute one. We'll, we'll go back to the, you know, the horror aspect of that in a second, but I do want to hear about the research that you had to do all of you, because, you know, what you did to really tap into the characters in the story. Little Marvin, let's start with you. Uh, there was a lot of research and, and you know, I think that the shock for me, you know, I, as the writer of the show, as the writer of the pilot in particular, I, I was the first benefactor of like the wow I never knew about the historical component. And that's what really got me in, like to see these tactics that would have been totally at home in the Jim Crow South being played out in sort of sunny suburban California was a shock to the system. I think there's this sort of idea of what California is and what it's been which as we know, historically speaking, is not the case. Um, and so that was really interesting to me. The waves of the Great Migration were interesting. Like there was a first wave early on where it was sort of hopeful because there weren't many Black folks who had moved in. It was as more and more began to say to their families, come out here, it's really fantastic, that all of the sort of vitriol really began to kick up. So that was also interesting to me. And then the sort of the wow I never knew about Compton was the true kind of light bulb moment for me because here's this place that has iconically held a very black association in people's minds pop culturally and to know that only 60 70 years ago that that wasn't the case um was was a light bulb so yeah yeah that was a huge light bulb for me and I grew up partially in the bay area and so for me I never knew that Compton just a, a few you know decades ago was a totally different Compton that we, we you know, now know. And, and for me, I think um, I'm really grateful to the show for really just opening my eyes to so many things that I had no idea about, you know, just the redlining around 
um, real estate, education, healthcare, you know, just really learning about that. And then playing a character that allows you the opportunity to experience it firsthand. I'm also grateful for my Howard education because I feel like there they teach you things that you really don't get taught in, in you know, from grade school to, you know, being a senior. And we just really learned about Black history in America, all over the world. And so for me, it was just, you know, remembering a lot of things that I was taught. I just done Harriet, I think a year prior, a year or so prior. And so that also required me to do a lot of research that I also used for this role as well. And I think for me, I also was really obsessed with the Great Migration. A, because of my own, you know, migration story to America, but also um, because I'm obsessed with the Harlem Renaissance. And that's one of the things that kind of came out of that time. Um, but I think I was pretty um, naive to think that, which I learned with the show, that if they could just make it North, West, Midwest, that they would be safe. And that's something that I learned with the show that that wasn't necessarily the case for a lot of families. Like they still made it to these places and faced a lot of racism, faced a lot of discrimination. You know, I could have done all the research in the world and would have still been like, wow, I actually did not know that. So yeah, it was just a beautiful learning experience all around to be honest with you, for me. Ashley, what about for you? Yeah, just uh, like I said earlier, just I knew in order to transform into the character, there was going to have to be an intensive amount of work and research. So the first thing to do would be to strip away my ego, right? So I'm from the UK, can hear from my accent, and I have my own experiences here that I could extrapolate into the character. But stripping away the ego and understanding that there is a gap in my understanding in terms of the African-American experience and what can I do to bridge the gap in my understanding. So that involved talking to friends that were African-American, African-American people to help understand their experience. Read a lot of books. I read an incredible book called um, City Limits by Joss Sides, which spoke about the um, Great Migration, the Great Depression to the modern era. What was great about that book was that it was specific to Los Angeles. Um, what music was being listened to at the time. So I'm listening to Robert Johnson, Muddy Waters, um, Ella Fitzgerald, all these things to help inform my character and use myself as a vessel and everyone's experience that they've given me and put it into the character so that I could make accurate choices and decisions as Henry so that I could play the character authentically. I met an older man called Jerris who lived in my building and he grew up in Texas under Jim Crow and he shared his experiences with me. So I could also use um, myself as a vessel to help tell his story. So really for me, it was about taking all those different elements and fusing them together and playing, transforming myself from Ashley, putting Ashley to the side and being totally in service to Henry. So even changing my accent, I, um, I reached that well, I got the production team to reach out to Samara Bay because I had seen the work that she had done with Ruth Negger on Loving, and I was very blown away by what those two had achieved on that. So Samara Bay came on board, and then we worked with her, Deborah, and myself to really dial into the North Carolina accent. So it was all those elements in terms of voice, physicality, being music, how does he walk, how does he talk, and fuse all those elements together in order to transform and, and play the character. Yeah. And you talk about getting the first three scripts early on, but you know, the series as it evolves is, and Little Marvin, you, meant, you know, you mentioned it, it's dark, it's heartbreaking, it's also horrific. I mean, did you know what you were getting into when you got the, please do this from Little Marvin, like just emotionally and physically, like, Talk about that and what, you know, you were all, all three of you went through like just emotionally as you were working on this. I'd say it was a journey within a journey for me, really. So it was like the journey of Ashley transforming into Henry and learning all the history and all the nuances of the character, the era, the time, 
and then taking Henry on a journey physically, how he starts out, he's so proud. The physicality was a very important part of his being as a character. When you first see him, he's a proud man, he's standing up straight, his chest is forward, his head is up, and then throughout the pressures of the world and the, the daily events that's happening to him and his family, how that is taken and um, toll on his on his physical being. So as he starts to turn into this, I guess this abomination that he has seen, how he has seen, and he starts to turn into that. So how do I do that subtly among in the character, not let it be seen until the end, and then the the words that he's being called throughout him and his family are being called throughout the series having to bottle my own generational trauma within that, things that I'm experiencing now is actually, so there's, there's all these elements um, that I'm going through at the time in order to deliver the piece. I think as actors generally, what we take people's most private, deepest, darkest moments, and we play it in front of an audience of however many, it's a really, really hard job, you know? And so for me, some of the things that I've had to play out with Lucky, I never had to go that far before, you know, and I knew that it would require every single bit of every single bit of what I've gone through in my personal life and all the stories I've heard of other people, what they've gone through. And I knew for me on top of that, I felt a big responsibility to play it truthfully and authentically so that when these people watched it, they would feel seen. They would feel like, yes, that was my experience or that was at least the emotion of my experience. And so for me, it was just um, almost kind of like sacrificing myself, putting myself to the side for a moment and putting the, the importance of this story ahead of of myself really for the time being that we um, that we were um, filming. It wasn't easy to say the least, but I think it was really, really worth it. It's so interesting to hear both of them say that because it was similar for me. I mean, in, the ter in terms of, um, I heard uh, Ash earlier said about just relinquishing your ego and Dev said just sort of giving yourself over. And I think like part of your job as a writer or certainly when you feel like it's kind of crackling is when you're not there, <laughs> like you disappear and the thing that you're making is really bigger than all of you. And I think we all felt that there was some, there was a magic really to this um, that was sort of palpable on the set. We all felt like we were giving ourselves over to honoring these families and their experience. And that took the precedence over everything. And there are days where you're overwhelmed with fear. I mean, I, I days where I was absolutely like, my God, this is the moment they shut us down. We're not going to be able to do this. Like, you know, because we're taking some risks and the show takes some leaps and it's and it's attempting to to explore and wrestle with some really ugly truths about this country and some darkness about this country. And that can be a terrifying journey to go on. But I think as a creator, your job is also at the same time to give these folks um, a safe space you know we had a mantra which was a safe space for dangerous things to happen and so if they don't feel safe if they don't feel held then it's a, it's just a nightmare for everybody so i think part of the journey too is just creating a safe space for these guys to just you know fearlessly embody the truth yeah i definitely i could i could tag on to that and say that i did feel safe on the set in terms of you know, the directors and the producers and the crew as well. Like everyone around was very aware of the of the journey that we were on as actors trying to deliver these important these important stories and these important characters. And they really, you know, we all stuck together like one huge movement, one huge family we stuck together. And when when Deborah and I had really intense scenes, everyone was quiet and no one was making any jokes and everyone knew to, you know, set aside their own sort of maybe even fun for the day and just let us do, do our work, um, which was which was important. And all, all of those moments helped us to, I guess, deliver our best. Everyone put their best foot forward and it allowed the actors to be the same directors, everyone from the assistants, everyone, everyone on the set. And also having a, um, a therapist on call 
was a huge thing that I feel like should happen more and more and more on different sets, to be honest with you, especially when you're, we're, um, we're tackling uh, heavy material, like you never know who's triggered. You never know, you know, who, what scene might really, you know, how it might affect someone. So having that on set really was so special. You know, it was for anyone, cast or crew to take advantage of, that was really, really special. And that for me told me, okay, they really, they care about our, our mental health more than just getting the job done. It's like, okay, these are people at the end of the day. So yeah, to tag on, like I definitely felt safe. The way that they sort of held uh, Melody and Shahadi, you know, these are the two youngest in our in our cast and and it's not an easy journey for their characters. And to watch them actually become a family unit was one of the most like uh, amazing experiences. These two, I would, we would be off and they'd be at craft services together. And I'm like, oh my God, they're a family. Like they actually like, they're a family. They're going out together on the weekends. Like they're, they're, they became this little nuclear unit. And I think that that was so beautiful to watch the two girls too look up to these two. Um, that was tremendous. I felt like the girls did as much for me as I did for them in that sense, because just to watch them and just to watch their, their light spiritedness, I'm doing TikTok videos in the middle of like these heavy scenes, like. Literally in the, literally in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of the scene, like, you know, it really just like, it just brings you back to the mind of a child, you know, when you're, when you're tackling this heavy stuff and it's like, you know, they're still like spirited, you know, and I, for me, I felt very tasked to like protect that, but also to also draw from that. So when, you know, say cut, I'm wrapped, I can like think about that and just like try to like channel that for myself, you know, so they were like, they were good for my soul as well. I'm so glad you gave Shahadi and Melody a shout out because they are truly remarkable in this series, as are you. So for our audience out there who might have seen just seen the trailer, might have seen one episode, might not have even discovered the series yet until today. What would you say to each of them to make them start watching the series? And should they binge it or should they take in one episode at a time? I say binge. Why not? <laughs> Live on the wild side. It's Why funny not? because it's funny because I've I've I've, heard, alone, but I say binge. I've heard I say binge too. People you've never met will write you how they watch the show. And like yeah, I'm yeah. hearing both. I'm hearing folks who are like, I watched everything in one night. And then I'm hearing folks who are like, I had to take my time, watch an episode a week. I was like, a week. This is <laughs> so like you have heard everything under the sun. I think it depends on how, you know. I don't know. I binge. I would binge. <laughs> I say, that's, that's me. Dive in. Yeah, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to step away from the family's decision. Every. every... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, I definitely think. Um, definitely think binge, and then and then go and do research, which is what it made me do, even as an actor. You know, just the show made me curious, really, and um, want to research more of our history, whether that be um, Black history in America, Black history around the world, just like what's happening with with our people across the, across the globe. So yeah, binge and then binge and then research and then watch, watch this interview. I know you guys have been experiencing the same thing, Ash, but it's been, I think what's been most kind of just enlightening and re like rewarding in all the ways are just messages from folks. This happened to my auntie when she moved here. This happened to my grandparents. And that for, I, I, I that is the biggest gift is that folks hopefully feel seen and heard and held by them by the material. Yes, uh, every single time someone tells me that their older relative or what have you has watched it, they're always like they felt they were rooting us on. They felt so good about it because they were like, yes, that's exactly how it was. And yes, weeks. But I knew so and so that went through that. Like for me, that's one of the biggest rewards. Like it's just been so rewarding to read the different messages from people. Yeah, me too. And, and that people are proud of, yeah. of, you know, that there's such a sense of pride in terms of seeing this Black family played authentically and that they can be, you know, really look to it and feel like, yeah, that is how our people are, you know. They are vulnerable and they are strong and they love each other and they work hard and they stick together. And these are, you know, images that we don't typically see of ourselves in the media and just that it's represented on screen and 
it is traumatic and there is trauma in the show, but essentially that the 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 real heartbeat of the show is black love and that, you know, whether that be love from the parents to the kids or the kids to the parents or romantic love between Henry and Lucky. So, you know, just that this show has all these sort of layers and elements and we can watch it and be proud of, as a people of this show. That's what is, you know, amazing to me. I'm proud of the show and I'm glad that people are reaching out and they are proud of it also. Yeah. Amazing. Well, to those tuning in, you can find them on Amazon Prime Video. And I want to thank you, little Marvin, Deborah, Ashley, and to our friends at Amazon Prime and for talking with us today. And thank you to everybody listening from wherever you are. And thank you for joining us today for Half Hour With. Thank you, Jess.